Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel, everybody. You got Lanny for the Dividend Diplomats. Today, we are going to talk to you about another great dividend growth stock that got crushed after earnings. They got crushed. They got murdered, bloodied. Halloween weekend happened. We just, just couldn't deal yeah. with the massacre. But in this video, we're going to talk to you about the earnings, compare them to their competitor, and see are they an undervalued stock hey, to buy after easy. earnings. Hey, they, we're, we're not taking it easy on this video. We are going to find out, should you be buying this great stuff? But stock? before we do, smash the heck out of the subscribe button, turn that thumb blue, give this video a nice thumbs up. We're the Dividend Diplomats. We need to get the crowd going. We're get here it. to give the people what they want. So get hyped, get ready. Lanny, quick recap. What happened in the stock market? The stock market blew up to almost 4,600 plus. Cryptocurrencies are flying sky high right now. But guess what? Earnings releases were coming out hot and heavy, and these two big players were about to compete against each other in the dividend stock ring are at the forefront. Yeah, absolutely, and that's what's crazy. A lot of great companies have absolutely crushed it. Others, like Lockheed, haven't had great earnings releases, and their price were hammered. The stock we're going to talk about they led the charge, and then the other company that we're going to compare them to in this quickly followed after. So... We are here to compare two dividend stocks to see if one of them is the better stock and if any of them are dividend stocks to buy right now. It's interesting because these two are high growth companies. Low yielding ones too. Low yield, high growth, high dividend growth as well. So when we put them two in the ring, we're going to talk a little bit about what their earnings release has stated, what current exciting projects they have going on to continue that growth and then we're here to compete. That's absolutely right, Lanny. So what's exciting, these are two high profile companies because check your wallet, chances are you might have one or both of them in your wallet there because we are heading over to the credit card sector. Here we go, we're putting Visa, ticker symbol V, up against MasterCard, ticker symbol MA. So what caught our attention with them? Obviously, they got crushed after earnings. This week alone, Visa was down over 9%. MasterCard was down over 7%. And while I was busy buying Lockheed, buying some Intel, we got a lot of tweets of people saying, when we asked them, what stocks are you buying this week? A lot of people were buying Visa. A lot of people were buying MasterCard. So that's what got us the idea of let's run them against each other and see how those two companies stack up. You know, what's exciting right now about Visa and MasterCard is who they're partnering with right now and what industry they're starting to really dive deep into, Burn, What industry is that? The crypto industry. They're using their card services to provide the same transaction services that banks are seeing for regular credit card payments, for regular debit card but they're putting the crypto twist on there. They're helping getting their fee income from all these new exciting crypto companies. Lanny, who has Visa paired themselves with? So Visa's already with, as I'm sure you've seen, the plethora of commercials, especially here on YouTube. I feel like if you're in this industry or if you're watching these types of channels, you've probably seen all of these commercials. But they're with BlockFi, Crypto.com, M1 Finance, and Coinbase. Yeah, and MasterCard, to compare, is partnered with SoFi, Robinhood. <sighs> And Gemini, just like the banking sector. They're yeah. both digging their heels in, working with their respective large institutions in each. And what's cool about Visa and MasterCard is just how they are going to get the fee income from this, how they are going to benefit without having some of the risky exposure that some of the other companies are. Right. So that's where a lot of the new growth and exciting growth could be coming from Visa and MasterCard when they're dealing in the crypto or cryptocurrency uh, platform market right now. And everybody you know, once their hand on a card so they can earn, you know, Bitcoin back or Ethereum back on every, you know, card swipe that they do. And I thought one of the cool things for MasterCard was they recently announced a partnership with, I think, is it Bakked? It's B-A-K-K-T. I have no idea how to actually pronounce that correctly. But they're going to start working ways to integrate Bitcoin and other things into their platforms so that banks can offer their people crypto wallets, other type of crypto offerings, so they can start taking advantage of it this way. And if Visa hasn't announced it, I would soon expect them to follow with their own partnership. Very much looking forward to it. And then when we were peeling back their earnings releases, I mean, Visa just killed it. Yeah, that was the thing. It's their price drop, but you look at the numbers. What was it? Earnings were 70% higher this quarter in this year compared to last year. They experienced 10% net revenue growth. On a year-to-date basis. Yeah, it's, it's insane when you pull it up. Yeah, revenue is $6.6 .6 up. 
29% compared to the same quarter last year. Net income, $3.6 billion, up 68%. So they have payment volume is increasing. All great things are looking there. So why does this company continue to get crushed? You know, I think it's based on expectations. I want to say that the, you know, some of the management, executive management at Visa kind of reduced what the expectation should be with Visa going forward. Anytime you put lower guidance than expected guidance, it's going to cause the price drop. No, I like what Intel and Lockheed did. That's exactly right. But it just made me laugh for Visa because their expectations were 20% revenue growth. And now it's getting reduced to the low to mid teens. So it's not enough growth for the investors. Yeah. And one other thing I guess to point out is we looked at Visa because Visa was the one that released their earnings that kind of kicked this off. So that's why we're jumping in here. One thing you pointed out, Lanny, is they're a pretty liquid company, too, as we started looking oh, at the balance yeah, sheet. Yeah, that balance sheet is so clean for Visa. They're so liquid that uh, current ratio is almost 2x, so uh, their current assets covering current liabilities. Long-term debt is down from last year to this year. They don't have much there. Obviously, they don't really have inventory, so the quick ratio is pretty much just the same. So they're highly liquid highly able to just invest into any R&D to just continue growing the business. So, all right, let's run them through. Let's do the it. Dividend diplomats, dividend stock screener. All right. Three metrics, P ratio, payout ratio, history of increasing dividends. And of course, we're going to look at the yield. We're going to look at the yield. It's not all about the yield, but it is a nice little bonus. Yeah, that's the cherry on top when we look at the rest of the metrics. It's the little bit of Bitcoin back into your Coinbase platform after you swipe your Visa card. <laughs> All right. Visa's price at the time of recording was two hundred eleven seventy seven. Their 2022 forward earnings estimates on Yahoo.com were wow. 709 P nice. ratio 29.87. The 29.87 pretty much equaling what the S&P 500 is. Before the stock price drop, this thing was well into the 30s. So PE ratio of less than 30 on Visa. A little bit high, but looks like a MasterCard. Three, their price was 335.52. Their 2022 earnings estimates were 1064. That gives you a PE ratio of 31.53. So higher than Visa. Visa outdoing MasterCard right now in the price to earnings department. But let's step into that dividend stock metric number two, brother. So dividends per year from Visa right now is a dollar fifty. Um, you know it's based on thirty seven and a half cents. Um, you know annualizing that out, and you know based on the earnings expectations from analysts at seven dollars and nine cents, that dividend payout ratio is very low at just above twenty one percent. Mastercard to compare is one dollar and seventy six cents. Hmm. That EPS at 10.64 gives you a payout ratio of 16.54%. Lower payout ratio for MasterCard. Yeah, so let's move into metric three. Dividend history, Visa had a five-year dividend growth rate of 18.15%. And what about their last dividend increase, Landy? Last dividend increase was over 17%. Um, you know, definitely beat out the 2020 increase, which was much lower. Pandemic, understood, we got it. The 2021 over 17% dividend increase from Visa. Love it, baby. Yeah, MasterCard, their five year dividend growth rate is very comparable. It's 18.53%. They've increased that dividend for nine consecutive years, too. So, pretty much similar history. Similar history. You know, they're both going to be increasing the dividend each year, both in the mid double digits to upper double digits, <laughs> I guess. Fantastic. Well, let's move into that bonus metric, the dividend yield visas. Dividend yield is 0.71% after their price fell and after that dividend increase. 0.71, you know, a little bit less than the S&P 500. But again, the dividend growth rate being well over 18%, pretty solid. Yeah, MasterCard's dividend yield is 0.52%. So both are low yield, high dividend growth stocks, just like we said. Super high growth dividend stocks right now. You know, year to date, they're actually down. So going back, you know, to January all the way to this year, both stocks have, um, you know, declined in price overall. So let's compare them too as we run them through the screen here. Visa's P.E. ratio 29.87, MasterCard 31.53, Visa's payout ratio 21%, MasterCard 16%, mm -hmm. Visa's five-year dividend growth rate 18%, MasterCard's 18% as well, Visa's increased for 12 years, MasterCard for nine, the dividend yields, Visa 0.71% and 0.52%. Wow, so birthday, you have it.
yeah. two high flying dividend growth stocks in the credit card industry, mm -hmm. really deep diving, cannonballing into the cryptocurrency as well. Yeah, and one other thing, I have to come back to something I said earlier. I said Visa was the only one that released earnings this week. As it turns out, I missed it right before preparing for this video. MasterCard also increased earnings too. So we're not going to dive into the full way we did with Visa, but just know MasterCard's earnings, and we'll put some of the charts up here, strong revenue growth, strong income growth, strong EPS growth. So you can apply the same trends we said about Visa earlier in the video to MasterCard. Yeah, significant growth. 2020 was definitely a lower spend year, as you can imagine, with everything with the shutdowns. So these companies definitely killed 2021. Investors are looking at the future. Obviously, that the Visa and MasterCard are trying to stay involved with, hence why they're doing, you know, the Coinbase card, BlockFi, Crypto.com, Gemini, and you name it. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up for this video because that's a very exciting thing that's going to be happening in this sector going forward. So expect more releases from Visa, MasterCard, and all the crypto platforms. So the question is, is Bert, which one do you think is the better dividend growth stock right now? Yeah, that's hard. They're both so similar. That's it, it's hard. Their their metrics are pretty much amazing. in line. Oh, I don't know. We may have to go to WrestleMania again oh, next man. year for Road a rematch to WrestleMania. Here. I'm not going to be buying either of them, but I could see why any one person could say, I want Visa over MasterCard, I want MasterCard over Visa, or I just want both of them because they are such similar companies. Such similar. You get the benefits. You know, MasterCard has the Robinhood, you know, SoFi, et cetera. Visa, on the other hand, has the crypto, M1 Finance, Coinbase, et cetera. So they both have very strong partners that they've been able to join with and these agreements usually aren't one year i don't know the terms of these agreements but from my experience they're usually three five seven year agreements yeah and the switching costs are going to be very high if in the future um, crypto.com or blockfi says we want to move to mastercard that's not going to be an easy conversion to make so they're pretty sticky contracts that are going to generate a lot of revenue for both companies so there you have it which company are you buying which dividend stock do you like Visa or MasterCard? Let us know. Let us know which uh, you know cards you have out of the ones that we've mentioned. We're curious kind of what's in your wallet. Not to use the Capital One slogan. <laughs> Absolutely. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, give us a thumbs up. Thank you, everybody, for your support over the last year. Yeah. This was Bert, and this is Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats. Over, over and out. out.